president violated section 96 to subsection B of the constitution by exposing himself to a situation involving a conflict between his official responsibilities and his private business. The EFF commands the independent panel led by Chief Justice Sandy Lenovo for producing a comprehensive and concise report with a relatively understand involved, understood the gravity of the task before them and respected the people of South Africa enough to produce a report of quality in a timely manner. In light of the speed and quality work of the independent panel, the EFF condemns the law enforcement agencies and financial regulators, namely the Office of Acting Public Protector, the South African Revenue Services, the South African Reserve Bank, the National Prosecuting Authority, who have not released any findings or reports on the crimes committed at Palapala Farm. It is disgraceful that these entities are, marking, are making no progress on the Palapala matter and reveals how deeply Ramaphosa has compromised the institutions of this country. The EFF rejects with contempt the coordinated campaign by the media, which is attempting to discredit the outcomes of the independent panel and cast aspersion on the integrity of members of the panel itself. It is of a particular concern that a legal professional who is a woman is being doubted and discredited by captured media fraternity simply because she has represented individuals in the past in accordance to the guidance, to the guides and principles of legal profession. Society must reject the campaign by the hypocritical civil society, media, and the so-called religious society who want to create an impression that the removal of the corrupt president of South Africa represent the collapse of the country. The Republic of South Africa is founded on constitutionalism and the rule of law and not on the continued presidency of Sir Ramaphosa and the constitution and the rule of law must not be doubted and disrespected simply be found to have broken the law and it must be removed as a matter of agency. We note the reports that Sir Ramaphosa intends to take the report of the independent panel on judicial review and as the EFF we view this move as a disparate and a further disrespect of South African people and the constitution. It reveals that Ramaphosa is arrogant in his criminality because he is the one who has, who has considered to breaching the laws of, the, of this country. Such an engaging in paid work while, while a president and failing to report the theft of his laundered money to the relevant law enforcement agencies. The EFF reiterates the view of the independent panel which illustrate that the evidence of Cyril Ramaphosa regarding Palapala farm must be approached with caution. And this is logical because there is a propensity of lying and misleading investigative agencies. The EFF will thoroughly expose Ramaphosa on the 6th of December 2022 as a money launderer who is part and parcel of a criminal underworld which erodes the economy of this country and violates the laws in order to enrich himself. The EFF, along with the majority of opposition parties, calls for the following ahead of the parliamentary sitting of Parliament on the 6th of December. Parliament must be physically convened to vote for the impeachment process to commence when we convene on the 6th of December 2022 and the reason for fiscal convening parliament is to avoid a situation in which represented political parties lock up members of parliament in private venues that are not protected and secure for parliament and all its members. Political parties and all members of parliament must vote for the impeachment process to commence. Not doing so is not sensible and will not pass the rationality test. Voting against Section 89 independent panel's recommendation will be a violation of parliament's constitutional obligation to hold the executive accountable. And previous rulings of the constitutional court have condemned parliament's lack of oversight and vigilance, of the over, vigilance over the executive. The EFF, along with the opposition parties, has resolved that in addition to the Section 89 impeachment process, the third largest political party in Parliament will table the motion of no confidence against Mr. Sir Ramaphosa before the sitting of the National Assembly on the 6th of December 2022. The EFF will explore legal avenues to compel the Office of Acting Public Protector, the South African Reserve Bank, the National Prosecuting Authority to reduce release their respective reports and findings regarding the crime that 
on impeachment, I think that's what we are doing tomorrow. We are going to vote for the impeachment process uh, to ensure that Ramaphosa lives with nothing. And uh, on the current comment, we feel vindicated by demanding his uh, removal from the panel. And he hasn't wasted time to expose that he is actually a biased person who is uh, uh, fighting for Ramaphosa. So I think even his inclusion in the panel initially was um, a give and take type of an arrangement where perhaps when the speaker was constituting a panel, consulted the ANC or the president and they said, okay, uh, to get a balanced thing, just take this man. So it was clearly, clearly a deployment of Ramaphosa to go and release a report that will um, favor Ramaphosa. Uh, the shutdown is still in the process, um, but by the look of things, I don't think we'll reach there uh, because the men will go um, anytime soon. Um, um, uh, so today, uh, the ANC is meeting. The ANC and WC yesterday resolved that Ramaphosa must step down. Um, uh, um, and then the MPs must uh, vote against the panel. So you can see it's a negotiation that if you step down, will vote against the impeachment and you can retain your benefits and all of that. So, and, the, and the, what is interesting is that the, you, the media, know that. Know that the, the ANC and WC agree that you must step down. You, you leave the step down thing and then you push the narrative that the ANC is going to vote against the panel's recommendation uh, and then project Ramaphosa as having won uh, 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 as it were. But the reality is that the ANC has recommended to the NEC that Ramaphosa must step down and members of parliament must vote against uh, the impeachment, which is something we are opposed to. He must step down and he must still be impeached. Um, stepping down does not mean uh, he must not be impeached and even after the even during the impeachment he must still be arrested he committed crime uh, he committed corruption so all of that must follow and then why should it follow it must even follow more because ramaphosa is fighting as if he has not done anything wrong if he was someone who was showing remorse uh, perhaps some of these things will look the other way and say no uh, the guy has seen his mistakes and has accepted. No, he's not. He has, he has actually put the country in a state where we are divided. And uh, uh, to a point where he even left his responsibilities. Because as we speak now, he's no longer a president. Because a president, after such a report, had a responsibility to come out reassure the markets, reassure the nation that things are in order. He abandoned that. He abandoned his accountability in parliament. He went into hiding. It's just that in South Africa, we don't have soldiers. Because in that short space of time of the disappearance of the president without trace, the general of the army should have taken over. So the president vanished. And you see nothing wrong with that. Uh, that Archbishop Mahoba sees nothing wrong with that. That Council of Churches sees nothing wrong with that. Where a president disappears for four days without trace, without telling the nation what's going to happen. By doing that, the president has effectively and immediately resigned. We don't need a letter. Through his action, the president has told you that is no longer the president of South Africa. And you guys are insisting on making him something that he says he doesn't want to be. So, Mahoba's as utterances are so disingenuous and are not deserving of a man of cloth. If I was a member of the Anglican Church, I would have filed for motion of no confidence 
on Archbishop Makuba, who is factional, who has lost his morality, who has lost his ethics, who has gone all out to defend corruption and money laundering. A president who has admitted that I kept in my house $530,000. What more does Makuba want? Because the president has said so himself, that he kept $530,000 in his house. Secondly, the president has said, I have not reported the stealing in my farm, as, request, as required by Preka, that more than 100,000 K, if stolen, must be reported to the Hawks. The president has admitted that. Mahoba says no, uh, uh, the man must stay if he goes, there must be government of national unity. You see, Murutu uh, uh, Oti maneuvering to protect a criminal. I've never seen such thing in my entire life. The whole council of churches corrupt to the core, defending a criminal, men of cloth. Where are the other pastors who can rise on their own and say, don't say that in our name? Crime is crime. It doesn't matter who committed the crime. The man of cloth must always be on the side of the law, not on the side of criminals. Everybody who was claiming to be clean, who was claiming to be the defenders of the Constitution, today are defending the man against the constitution. The whole Joel Nechitenze, an over-exaggerated intellectual who defends a criminal using tribalism. For the second time now, Ramaphosa said the July unrest was caused by the Zulus. Now Joel comes and says the defenders of uh, uh, the people who demand Ramaphosa to, to leave are Zulus. What do these two vendor men have against Zulus? What is this tribalism that these two vendor men are, are, are pushing in this country? They are provoking those Zulus when they are, they are not doing anything. They have not done anything. The man is saying, look at the people who want a Cyril to go. All of them come from one province where Zuma comes from. He thinks he's being intellectual as usual. But he's effectively saying, look at all these people are Zulus. Why is Joel and Cyril being allowed to perpetuate tribalism in this country? And these are the people who are told are the best of the best who will defend the constitution. Why is Cyril the man who we were told is the one who drafted the constitution? Not being the first one to defend the same constitution he drafted the so-called best constitution in the country, in the world. So, I am happy that this moment has come to show to all of you that the rod is not Zuma. The rod is not Ramaphosa. The rod is the whole entire ANC. As the EFF, we are very happy that the secret ballot is not provided. Nkosazana spoke on TV and said Cyril must go. Lindy Wesisulu spoke on TV and said Cyril must go. Uh, Supra spoke and said Cyril must go. Tomorrow, let them go and raise their hands. They must not become peacetime heroes. They were talking on TV. Let the real truth prevail tomorrow. Let's see if they meant what they were saying on TV. Secret ballot for what? If they are for the constitution, if they are for the rule of law, and they are not for the men, let tomorrow South Africa see who is on the side of the constitution and who is on the side of an individual. We are happy with the decision of the speaker not to grant the secret ballot. Tomorrow, we want to see all these crooks, or are they genuine? Or are they just speaking because there are cameras in front of them? They must raise hands, seated next to the man, seated next to their own colleagues and say, my conscience doesn't allow. And they must remember this. They are highly protected. Because the Constitutional Court said, members of parliament must vote according to their conscience, not according to their party mandate. When they are in there, 
they cease to be members of political parties, but they become representatives of the people of South Africa. So tomorrow, we are going to separate women from girls, boys from men. Let's go and see if all these things they were saying on national TV and Twitters and all of that, they will dare repeat it where it matters the most tomorrow in Parliament. Who takes Gwede Mantashi serious? Gwede has got a problem of Busasa. And there is no way Gwede will not defend Cyril because he knows that if Cyril goes, he too goes, and he doesn't just go, he goes to prison. And the EFF will make sure that Gwede goes to prison. Because from now onwards, we are going to write to the NPA and tell us whether they are charging Gwede or they are not charging Gwede. And if they don't charge Gwede, we are going to prosecute Gwede privately, through private prosecution. We don't understand why Gwede is not arrested until now. When there is clear evidence and undisputed again by Gwede himself. So we are going to pursue private prosecution for all those Busasa people. All of them. All of you here speak about uh, uh, Zulim Kizi and, and digital vibes. Even when the material, I, uh, the material evidence doesn't indicate anything for a man's involvement. Nothing. Right? There are people who are not disputing. Tabam Makwetla said he's waiting for invoice for how many years now? From Busas. He hasn't paid. Nomvulam uh, Konyani ate the chickens. She had never disputed to have eaten the chickens from Busas. Gwede Mantashi has never disputed that cameras were installed at this place. All of these people, they've got no defense, nothing. But you never mention them, that these are the beneficiaries of corruption. If anything, Gwede is being projected as fighting criminals who want to remove Cyril. A criminal! Gwede, a criminal! One, fighting criminals! So, it can't be correct. Stop being functional and be factual. The reality is that the digital vibes, evidence, is not overwhelming beyond the evidence against Gwede, against Nomvula, against Tabamakwet. Now, why are we being told here that DD can't be president of South Africa, that we must go to elections because we must avoid DD? DD is our deputy president as we speak. Are we saying that the office of the deputy president is, is, is useless to a point that it can be occupied by this man that you are all so scared of today? It's not true. You are not scared of DD. The reality is that DD is not captured by the Oppenheimers and the Ruperts and all of them. And because they don't have the thinking thought of DD Mabuza, they project him as a criminal. I've said it here many times that we were told DD is a murderer. We were told DD is a corrupt. None of those allegations were ever proven by anyone, not even prima facie evidence produced against DD. You are saying we must be scared of a man who there is no evidence against and cherish a man who has committed crime and we've got overwhelming evidence. This hypocrisy it will not be sustainable under this democratic dispensation. So, the fear mongering, the, the, the scare mongering that we are having around DD, it is because the establishment has got no total control over DD. That's what we're suffering from. He's a murderer. Why, why did your clean president appoint a, a murderer as a deputy? Because your president is a clean president, Ramaphosa. Why did he appoint a murderer as a deputy? If your president is so clean 
and he has won election on an anti-corruption ticket. Why did he appoint DD as a deputy president if DD is corrupt? If DD is all these things that you are telling us, why did your clean president appoint him? There is nothing wrong with DD. And as a result, just be ready. Tighten your seat belt. It's unavoidable. We are likely to eat beetroots Christmas Day with DD as a president. As you are having your seven colors, DD will be delivering a Christmas message. So this scaremongering will not work. Because there are no facts, none whatsoever, against DD. We must not be a gullible all the time when the Oppenheimers and the Ruperts speak. We must all be chasing after them. No. They just paint a man like that and leave him with a, a dark cloud. The man said, this, listen to the man of integrity. Listen to the man of integrity. DD said to the ANC, NEC, if I'm corrupt, if I'm, murder, I'm a murderer, do not appoint me as deputy president. Don't even, I don't want to be swear, sworn, in, sworn in as a member of parliament. If you remember, SG, it took time for DD to be sworn in as a member of parliament. He refused. He said, if, he even went to the ethics committee of the ANC and said, charge me. What have I done? Only a man of integrity, a man of ethical leadership will do that. Did he refuse to be sworn in? Did he refuse to be a deputy president and said, if I am all what you are saying I am, let me stay at literally house. Why did they insist on appointing him? Where was Gwede, the clean Gwede, to stop DD from being sworn in? Where was Mahoba? Where was SA, South African Council of Churches? Where were all these so clean people? When the Cyril insisted on DD to be sworn in, why didn't they say, Cyril, our clean guy, do not appoint this guy? Why? The fact that DD is a deputy president of this country, it means he meets all the requirements to be the president. And nothing will stop him from being the president except the ANC itself. Not this scaremongering. There is no any election that is going to be held here. We are going to election in 2024. Listen to all political parties and people who are funded by the Oppenheimers. All of them. Mahoba, uh, uh, DA, Herman Mashaba. They all read from the same script. Dissolve the government, go to an early election. You know why? Because Oppenheimer is the only person who is allowed to finance political parties in South Africa. He will give money to the DA, he will give money to Herman Mashaba, they will go to elections and defeat all of us because we don't have money. Oppenheimer gives political parties money, no one questions him, no one closes his bank accounts. But if a businessman was to finance the EFF and declare it publicly, he will have his bank account closed. Why? Because he financed an, a different political opinion. In South Africa, a different political opinion gets punished. You are not allowed to disagree. Everyone who disagreed in South Africa, their banks are closed, bank accounts are closed. Here is a money launderer, yeah, who has admitted to have kept cash in his home. Did APSA close his bank account? Did FNB close Cyril Ramaphosa's bank account? Anyone who has ever mentioned about this or that corruption, without the proof, the banks have closed their accounts. Why are the Ramaphosa's bank accounts not closed? Ramaphosa's son admitted to have taken money from Busasa. His bank account is not closed. Why? Because he doesn't hold a different political opinion. In South Africa, you hold a different political opinion. The banks close your accounts. That's why we are calling for the transformation of the banks. That's why we are calling for the black ownership of the banks. Look at the banks. All black managers dipping senior managers 
are treated with suspicion. There's no senior bank manager in South Africa who's not treated with a suspicion and with disregard. Look at the African bank today, which we said government must take over. Its management, very higher management, black. Because the impression is that when you are black, you are inherently uh, incapacitated and corrupt. Black management of the African bank, turning that bank around, declaring profits. We are not saying African bank is transformed because they still do not finance the decisive interventions in the economy. But to have such management high, being black, is one step at the right direction. But I can tell you that if you go to African Bank, Standard Bank, or APSA, any black, black manager is treated with suspicion. We have Standard Bank, very senior black managers there, treated with suspicion, always people casting suspicions on them, because the banks have, have descended into the terrain and are fighting political battles. Why are the Ramaphosa's bank accounts still open, despite the fact that they've all admitted to have taken dirty money and corrupt money? If you are a member of the EFF, you are still banking with banks like APSA uh, or FNB. You are self-defeating. You are financing an anti-revolution. APSA and FNB are at the center of anti-revolution in South Africa and they must never be supported by any progressive South Africa. So, we hold a view that as the EFF, we must fight tooth and nail to have a state-owned bank to have a decisive intervention uh, in the economy. I don't know which COPE statement because I tried to call SG in the morning to check or is it Madisha Coop or uh, Terra Coop? I don't know which side it came from, that statement. There were two fake statements even about us. There were two fake statements about us. So, yeah, I, because uh, from where we are sitting, Coop has uh, confirmed. Remember, guys, we were together at the, at the public protector's office with Coop. So I don't understand what Coop, uh, statement Coop uh, released because... Uh, f from where we're sitting, we're together with COPE. The ANC tomorrow must vote against the panel so that South Africa can see them for who they are. They are a bunch of corrupt people who have got no regard for the laws of South Africa. They've got no regard for the laws of South Africa. So uh, the numbers look good. From where we're sitting, we've got no doubt. If the DA stop uh, some assaulting and comes clear and says we are voting for the panel's report, all of the opposition is consolidated. And the ANC people who have come out openly and others who have not gone to the media but have expressed it clearly uh, to us, the numbers look proper. The report will be adopted tomorrow. The only thing these people of the ANC are amenable to, which is a problem to us, is that maybe if he resigns, we may vote against the report and just let him go. That's what they're saying. But if the man insists, he's going to be shocked tomorrow. For the sake of the unity of the ANC, if he loves the ANC, the best thing will be to resign so that the ANC speaks in one voice. But if the man doesn't resign, Tomorrow, through show of hands, the, the ANC people are going to vote with us. The, our worry is not the ANC. Our worry is the DA. Because the DA is pretending, uh, 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 blowing uh, hot and cold, uh, this and that. Uh, remember, the DA did not submit uh, anything to the uh, Section 89 panel. And... Uh, when the results were being announced, when the report was handed over, Stainhausen said he's giving an educated guess. How can you give an educated guess when you're not educated? Oh. You know, illiterate people like throwing around some words they don't even understand their meaning. He says, I'm giving an e educated guess. This report is going to be in favor of Ramaphosa. He, he never wanted this report to be what it is. They are highly, highly conflicted because the poster boy of their handlers has been found wanting. 
Once the DA comes, we're done. But even if the DA doesn't come, the people of South Africa will see the DA for what it is, that it defends corruption, it defends a man who has found with dollars, who has violated uh, the laws of South Africa. What else? Huh? Thank you very much, uh, Commander-in-Chief. We'll take the last round of hands uh, for questions uh, in the PFF press conference. Uh, we'll welcome those journalists who are late. We're waiting outside. Uh, number one, number two, number three. It's the last round of hands. So if there are any questions, yeah. uh, can take them now. Forever hold your peace. Uh, number one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it will be number four. It will be number five. You can start there if you want. You can yeah. start there if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hello. Hi, uh, Mr. Lemma. Um, thank you. Um, uh, obviously, oh, please you know, state your name in the publication. Sorry. Oh yeah, uh, John Eligal with the New York Times. Thank you. Um, can you speak to, you know, what you see if the ANC does go forward with um, saying that they will not vote to adopt this resolution? What sort of message does that send to South Africans about this party, in your mind, and sort of its 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 its, its vow to renew itself and, and fight against corruption? Thank you. My brother in the red. Yeah. Uh, my name is Lunga from The Citizen. Uh, Mr. Malema, I, I, firstly, um, the party stands on women. I, um, we see, we've seen what you said in the Eastern Cape regarding to the top five that was chosen, which had no women there. And uh, we've seen in the past uh, your stance in regarding to Judge Maya, you recommending that she should be president or she should be the, um, what the Constitutional Court judge. I just want to find out from you, if in the next conference, the EFF conference, you and your, and your deputy had to be challenged by both women, would you, either of you, consider um, maybe letting them lead the party? Thank you. Okay, number three. Let's do business day. Uh, Mr. Malema, on your remarks about the army, are you, are you actually calling on the army to rise up and uh, Take over government in the event, in like say in future, the government goes, uh, the president, sorry, goes our a, a wall and doesn't take the nation into its confidence regarding whatever crisis it may be um, experiencing. Are, are you actually calling for the army, irrespective of which government will be in power then to basically take over? Thank you. Newsroom. Uh, Mbali again from Newsroom Africa. Mr. Malema, you, I think you forgot to answer my last question about uh, you saying you will expose Ramaphosa as a money launderer. Um, but my other question to you, um, it's the ANC conference in just a few uh, weeks' time with this Palapala farm issue. Who do you think uh, will emerge as the ANC president, especially now uh, in light of what we have seen? We've also seen reports as well from News 24. Your name has also been thrown in a report about a woman uh, who has been killed and uh, you are also friends um, with uh, her boyfriend. Just your reaction in terms of that crime that took place. Thank you very much. Same thing. Okay, um, Mr. Maleman, just clarity on the DA. Um, as when you've sat in the forum for opposition parties, what was their stance on this matter? And have you engaged with the leadership of the DA? And do you have any confidence in what will happen tomorrow? Because you're saying that it's blowing hot and cold. You don't know where that decision will go. And that is a sizable number that you will. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much. Well, uh, the ANC, if it votes against the panel's recommendation tomorrow, it will be showing the Constitution a middle finger. It's as simple as that. And uh, the party that has always claimed that it came with the best Constitution in the world, uh, the party that is led by a person who claims to have been a drafter of the same Constitution. Uh, so, uh, uh, um, um, it will be very clear tomorrow that if the decisions do not favor them, they disregard the Constitution. 
uh, and they only love the constitution if the decision favors them. Um, in the EFF, we are led now by three women in the top six. Uh, and um, that question doesn't arise. It's actually a factional question, uh, which is driven by uh, the desire to uh, satisfy one's ego. Uh, because it's about women leadership. If you understand the issues of feminism and gender equality, uh, it's not necessarily married to a particular position. So we have allowed women to lead now. And uh, why would we stop women from leading uh, tomorrow when we are, lead, we, are, we are in less than 10 years? Majority of in, in, uh, we are the only part actually with uh, more females representation in parliament. Um, uh, uh, so our conferences are constituted by more females than men. And uh, our membership in the uh, majority of our provinces, our membership is constituted by a female leadership. So it's not far fetched that uh, the EFF has got a potential not only to produce the first female president uh, of its own, but the first female president for the country. Uh, uh, because we, were, we are extremely committed to that issue and where uh, we are found wanting, we immediately make an intervention. Uh, I think you are in a wrong press conference. Perhaps you should have asked that in the ANC press conference, where even a candidate, there's no, there's one candidate or two uh, of all the candidates, and there's no candidate for president of uh, or uh, deputy president or anything of that sort of a female. Uh, so, in the EFF, that issue doesn't arise, Shem. Uh, we have sorted it out. Right from the formation of the EFF, if you go into the founding manifest of the EFF, uh, if reading is part of what uh, uh, constitutes your daily life, you'll find it there, uh, that this matter has been resolved. The army has got the responsibility to protect the constitution. If the political leadership is found wanting and is acting against the constitution, they've got the entire responsibility to defend it. They've a responsibility to defend the country. A man went a wall for four days. The, the, what, what more do you want? We were leaderless. And uh, one such vacuum uh, arises. We're going to be led by facts. We'll just have a gangster who's going to call a press conference at the SABC and say, we're done. We're, I'm in charge now. No work tomorrow. So the army too has got a responsibility to go to him and tell him that you must not play games with us. You can't do what you are doing uh, uh, and play hide and seek with us. It doesn't work like that. So a uh, political leadership must know that if it thinks it can play with the people of South Africa, there are levels within which this country will be uh, defended. So we're not going to have a president who thinks that he can do as he pleases. The man is gone. And the army should have gone to tell him, you are done, chief. The fact that you left for four days without telling anyone where you are going. The fact that you have abandoned parliament, you have abandoned your press conference, you, you plugged the country into crisis. And therefore, do the formalities of announcing, but in reality, you are gone. Well, let's leave the ANC conference to the ANC branches to deal with uh, their own internal matters. Uh, I think that uh, um, um, it doesn't matter who wins. The road is too deep. I mean, uh, there is no one, not a single one of them who will uh, save uh, this country from the mess we are subjected to uh, from the ANC. So, let's leave it to to the branches of the ANC to deal with him. Uh, Kyle's woman died, the girlfriend. Uh, I was reading, like everybody else, that she committed suicide, uh, and um, uh, the police are investigating that. Uh, um, I haven't spoken to Kyle, uh, but yeah, uh, I knew her very well. Uh, we're friends with Maya, 
uh, she was a, a very lovely lady, uh, forward-looking. Uh, she had um, a very good plans uh, for the continent, for the country, and they had uh, held our leadership in high regard. And it came as a shock that uh, she can kill herself, uh, you know. Uh, but you'll never know because she never came across to me as the type that uh, had the potential to kill herself. She spoke her mind openly, uh, without fear, and uh, they loved each other uh, with Kyle. And there was nothing that suggested there were uh, insurmountable problems which will warrant killing yourself or killing each other. I don't think um, um, uh, there was any sign of that sort. So um, it was a shock. It's not only Maya who died. I think uh, another friend of ours, uh, Martin, who was uh, who was a partner of Kyle and Adriano and them, also died uh, a day after uh, of uh, cancer. So you can imagine that uh, what the guys are going through now. Um, they've lost two close people very close to their heart and uh, um, uh, uh, it's a very difficult uh, period for them uh, and we can only wish them strength uh, and wish the families strength and uh, uh, wish that the souls of the two uh, who have departed uh, rest in peace uh, but it's an interesting thing of Maya because uh, the police have uh, uh, opened an inquest, so we should be able to get closure. Because those of us who knew her were like, what, what happened now? Uh, and uh, we'll need those answers. Um, uh, um, the DA gave apology in the last meeting. Uh, but uh, re rest assured us that they are still part of the, the forum. And uh, 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 we asked General Olomisa to speak to them on the motion of no confidence uh, and not on the voting of the panel because um, 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 there was no anything that was sent to us that suggests they hold a different view. Uh, the statement was circulated. Uh, that statement which we released of, of the forum and the DA commented on the statement saying change here, change there. Uh, generally, uh, they were happy uh, with the statement. But they, they don't inspire confidence. Their, their leader, when he speaks, he creates a lot of uh, uneasiness. And, and that's where we, we come from. But everything else will be revealed uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll know uh, who stands where. I think we even have a a press conference tomorrow of opposition parties uh, at 10 in uh, in Cape Town just before the the sitting of parliament uh, but uh, um, that's why I said to you uh, inclusive of the DA uh, we don't see any problems uh, and uh, we really want to caution the people who are attacking uh, Chief Justice Ngobo he didn't say anything, the old man Shem. He just said there is a prima facie evidence. The parliament must investigate. The old man didn't say uh, the guy is guilty or anything of that sort. He never said that. So to attack him, to even look for the value of his watch, uh, that he... 150,000 Rolex watch was stolen from him. That's a sign of desperation. The, the, the attacks are directed at the wrong person. That old man was sitting at home doing nothing. Busy with his retirement. They went to fetch him. Come and check here for us. If there is a, a, a case to answer, he came, he did his job, 
is done. And what is worse is that he can't answer for himself. But for people to cast a suspicion and correct assassinate him, it's really unfair. And to have women in the form of Feriel, Havaji, who claim to to stand for women are taking a female advocate for doing her job. That advocate has represented everyone. Everyone. If Ferial was genuine in an attack of that lady, she had all the time under the sun to object her inclusion in the panel, like we did. We didn't question people's characters after the results. Because we're genuine, we said this guy, Richard, is not independent. We objected, we fought to a point where he got excluded. What stopped Ferrier from writing a letter to the speaker and challenge the advocate? Only to wait for the results when they are not favorable, she attacks the poor lady. It's uncalled for. And I'm actually shocked that the so-called feminist voices, the so-called women's organizations, have gone mum on the attack of a female by another female. It's wrong. It's wrong to attack an African advocate who did her job. We don't even know what she said in the panel. What if she held a different view and she was persuaded otherwise? So the disparate to want to isolate members of the panel is uncalled for. That panel was appointed by parliament. They never asked. They never applied. And this woman was not even nominated by us, the political parties. You will say, no, maybe the EFF nominated her. That's why she behaved the way she did. No. She owes the woman of this country an apology for real. She owes the profession an apology. She owes women advocates an apology. Because in her utterances, she's suggesting that African female advocates cannot be trusted. And if they are not going to defend their profession, they will have themselves to blame. They must not allow Feriel or anyone to attack their profession. If they do so, they will delegitimize the female African advocates. It's very difficult to get a briefing for female advocates, African female advocates. It's very difficult. Here is a female advocate who gets an opportunity to rise and demonstrate the capacity of African females. What happens? She gets isolated and attacked. Because the agenda is not about her. It's to delegitimize the female advocates. It's deeper than that. And knowing Feriel as an advocate of the, um, as, an, as a journalist of the establishment, she will go to town to destroy any potential African. It has been her job in the, in, 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 as a journalist. So she must play very far from that woman. She, she has got nothing close to that woman. That woman is far much better than her in all respect. In, literally in all respect. So she, 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 she's no match to advocate Selu. And she must never do that. The less said about Madonzela. The Stellenbosch Makoti, the better.
So we, we don't even see she over exaggerated herself. She thinks she's some institution in this country. Yet she's nothing, 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 nothing. So we have no no time for such people. We will defend this panel report. We will defend it in public. We will defend it in parliament. We will defend it in the courts. Because when you take panel report on review, DP, you are not taking the panel uh, 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 to court. Because the panel has ceased to exist. So Ramaphosa is taking parliament to court. The president is taking parliament to court because the first respondent is parliament. The, the, the panel was established by parliament. The report has been handed over by, uh, to parliament. The speaker has received it. It's now a report of parliament which is going to be tabled. If you want anyone to answer, it's parliament. Justice in Mwabo must not even waste his time going around going to do avidavits for nonsense. He didn't establish himself. So you can't take the DC of the EFF to court without taking the EFF to court. That panel, it's a panel of parliament. The first respondent is parliament. Ramaphosa is taking parliament to court. The president of the Republic of South Africa is taking parliament to court. That's what it is, effectively. And then Makoba and SA's, as a Council of Churches still says, Hi, uh, he must stay as a president. A president who takes his own parliament to court must still stay. South Africa, we are being tested here. And the only solution is 2024. It's not this thing that the DA is speaking about of early elections. The early elections, this corrupt, are going to take the money of the state and finish us off with the DA's money of the Oppenheimers and Herman Mashaba's money of Oppenheimers. The rest of us won't even see the light of the day. The only thing that is going to take the ANC out of power is well-prepared election. Not a hush, hush, rush, rush election. We must prepare thoroughly for 2024 and that's where South Africans are going to get yet another opportunity to see if they enjoy corruption or they want a clean government because South Africans must also stop uh, behaving like victims here they too have got a weapon in their hands and that weapon is a cross and that cross must not be rushed let's prepare all the ground forces of the EFF, let's prepare the ground for 2024 and take over this government. We've got more than one million members. Anyone who's got numbers of Eusebius, who said he doesn't see the campaign of the EFF of one million, tell him that we've got more than one million members. If he's got time, he can come and check it. Yeah, we'll give him access to verify it. You are saying there is no campaign of the EFF, one million members, you can't see it anyway. The doomsayers, they are eating a humble pie now. Anything the EFF puts its eyes and hands on it happens. And that's who we are. We are going to take over this country come 2024. We are the only solution to the crisis confronting the people of South Africa. And if you are sleeping on us, South Africa, then you will have yourself to blame. Here is a party, here is the alternative, which has been holding the ANC accountable and the racist accountable all over South Africa. The only party. They've tried to smear its leadership. They failed at every turn because this leadership is the cleanest leadership this country has ever produced. And this leadership can be trusted by the people of South Africa and the people of the continent to deliver economic freedom to African people. So let's ready ourselves for 2024. Stop asking us whether Ramaphosa will go or will not go. He's gone. He's gone. Even if he insists on sitting, 
he will be the most useless president who will not enjoy the respect of anyone. Ramaphosa has committed worse than what Zuma was accused of. This is worse. And those who oppose Zuma and those who are opposing Ramaphosa today should have come together and said, this we don't agree with. We don't care who has done that. So, we don't say because we can't trust this one, we are prepared to tolerate the crime of this one. We don't say because this person is accused by criminals themselves of crime, we must not believe these criminals because uh, we trust this one's uh, uh, crime. Crime is crime. Whether you are accused by criminals or not, did you commit the crime? If the answer is yes, the man must go to jail. We don't care whether um, uh, 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 Ramaphosa is accused by Batavile Lameni or by Malusi Gigaba or whoever who was accused of crime before. We don't care. What we care about is did he really commit the crime? If the answer is yes, those who are accusing him of crime do not matter. So do not sidetrack us about hey, criminals want to remove uh, uh, Ramaphosa. Criminals want to remove criminal. Let criminals remove each other because they are all the same. We don't care. So because a criminal wants to be removed by other criminals, it must not be removed even if it's a criminal. That logic doesn't make sense. Stellenbosch has reached a ceiling. It can't think anymore. The thinking tanks can't produce ideas anymore. That's why they are using the lousy, laziest thinking and arguments to defend Ramaphosa. The emperor is naked. Matthew Posa, I called him this morning. I couldn't find him. You must know me. When I disagree with you, I call you before. He was fly, fly. He said he will, he will call back. We miss each other. Matthew Posa must leave this fear or jealousy of DD. Must leave it. Because he can't go and defend crime on the basis that he doesn't like DD. That his fight with DD makes him so blind to defend crime. We know him to be one of the fearless leaders this country has produced. But this thing that he doesn't like DD is the one that makes him now to want to defend wrong things because he's scared DD is going to come in. If DD is a criminal, let him come in, we're going to arrest him too. If you have nothing to show us, go and fight your personal battles with DD there. We're not party to that. They are suing each other there. He can't now come and want to defend crime. He was in the forefront, Matthew, of demanding the removal of Zuma. What has changed now? What has changed now? Because the most likely would person to come in is the someone you don't like. And because you don't like the possible candidate, you defend a criminal. Stop it, South Africa. Members of the Anglican Church, check on your bishop. He might be doing other jobs outside being a bishop. He might be receiving other things outside receiving the tithe. That bishop of uh, Anglican, there's something there fishy. There's no man of cloth who can speak like that. SACC, those who are affiliates of that council of churches, they must check on it. We call on real religious leaders and pastors to stand up and fight corruption and disagree with the defense of corruption by the council of churches. Where are these veterans of the ANC who are calling themselves clean and above? Where are they? They are all quiet. You know why? All of them seed in the boards of Rupert and the Oppenheimers. How do you have so old people still being board members? 
and then still call themselves elders when they've got business interest they are driven by business that's why they can't say anything because the emperor is naked the favorite of the establishment is exposed they are found wanting we were we are never found wanting we are consistent in the defense of a clean governance and that's what we have said during Zuma that's what we are saying during Ramaphosa we don't care who is in the office defend that office it must be occupied by someone with integrity there's nothing personal there personally we may like Ramaphosa but when it comes to leadership and ethical leadership we don't think he's the right person and he will go it's just a matter of hours the man will be gone and if the ANC votes against the panel will meet in court there's no parliament which is going to reject that panel will meet in court and the money launderer why do you ask me how, how, how are you going to expose the money launderer we're already exposing the money launderer now he's, he has admitted he's a money launderer he has admitted and you know I, I, I want this uh, process the impeachment process to start said I must take the money and put in the sofa and take the sofa and lock it in the room the whole operation how it unfolded Ndlovu is going to tell us the opposite I don't think Cyril wants that that domestic worker is going to tell us the opposite two two of the people who were involved in that crime were killed by the way so we just hope Ndlovu will not be killed we just hope that domestic worker will not be killed. Two are down already. And the media is not writing anything about it. They have that information. They know it. Two of the Palapala participants have died, killed. We hope Ndlovu will live to see the day of his appearance in parliament. Leave the police generals. and You just need those domestic workers. Or put them here. And ask them simple question. Love, the Jerry Charles guy, our man, na gaje chelet. Bejani, na le munno mo barke bejani. Kena di chen chelet mo gaso fam. Ruto ko di tap. Endo ko gaje na mala parliamenti. We are going to hear stories, proper stories, Julie. And I don't think Cyril wants that day. I don't think the ANC wants that day. The generals are even worse. They claim they pretend like they know the law. But as you go with them through the laws, they are going to realize that no, they've messed up. Police like pretending they know the law. They, know, they, they don't know the law. Leave the police. We'll expose them. We are not going to expose the domestic workers because there will not be too much to work to do. Just being called to parliament. You, you, you. Leave it alone. We'll let Nita and Amol do their own thing. Some of you are not So I think I'm going to go or tell you a story. All of it. So let's wait for that day where those domestic workers are going to tell us the truth. How can a safe domestic workers have access to safe to the safe domestic workers? That the money must be moved from the safe to the couch. Because domestic workers have got access to the safe. Two things that keep the safe safe is the key or the pin. When they give you the key of the safe, there are only two. You keep one with yourself, the other one you put it safe so that when you lose this one, you have an alternative. The pin is known by you. If you realize a lot of people know the pin, it doesn't take five seconds. You put the old pin and press the long press on hash, on the hashtag, and then you change that pin and create a new one. Why would Ramaphosa have a trouble of carrying the money into the sofa because everybody has got access to the safe? What, what type of an explanation is that? Where a Ramaphosa can just take the keys if everybody has got access, lock the place, take the keys, and leave. No, everybody has access. 
If everybody knows the pin, change the pin. And then leave the money safe. No. It's not true that people have got access uh, to the safe. It's not true that people know the pin. Because what is the pin code of that uh, safe? Are and he has. No one knows the pin. It's not true. So he's lying that his workers know the pin of the safe. There was no money in the safe. The money was taken from Johnny's bag in a couch from here in a truck driven special to the farm. They took the money in Johnny's bag. It arrived in a sofa. It was not put in the sofa. So it's he, he, he keep the more he speaks the more exposed he becomes because he lies he's lying he keeps on lying and lying so south africa if you are going to believe that everybody knows the pin of the coat of ramaphosa and has got access to the safe the money must be removed from the safe into the couch because it's not safe in the safe it's safe in the couch we have been taken for riding he thinks like he thinks we're all fools like him. If he has managed to fool ANC people, he can't fool all of us. We refuse to accept that explanation. Impeachment process is going to expose your favorite that he's a liar. And the police commissioner is going to be exposed, and that chief bodyguard of his is already singing. So it's a waste of time. Let them come there. We want this impeachment process so that we can be vindicated because majority of you say no, these guys are just are taking the president. The last point is this nonsense of saying he did not steal our money, it is his money. They stole his money, he didn't steal our money. He stole our money. We have shares in, that, in those dollars. Once they land here, they must be declared so that we can get our portion. He must put them in the bank so that it's an income he can pay income tax. So we have our portion in the dollars there. He stole our money. It's our money. He brings money here. He doesn't pay exchange rates. He doesn't pay tax. And then the super intellectuals come and say, it is not our money. That money was driven on which road? From the, it landed at which airport? Who's paying for that airport? It was driven on which road? It stopped at which robots? It's our money. He must pay for all of that. So we, when he didn't declare that money, he was hiding our tax. And, and when you hide our tax, you are stealing from us. Therefore, he stole from us. We have interest. We want our portion for South Africa. That's our money. So this nonsensical argument that no, he, he stole, they stole his money doesn't arise. It's our money too. Once it lands here, it must be declared so that we can take our portion. So, tomorrow in Parliament, we call on all members of Parliament to do the right thing. Do not vote against the Constitution in defense of a criminal. We must vote for the Constitution. Tomorrow's vote is the vote for the Constitution. Tomorrow's vote is for the vote of that signature of Nelson Mandela that he attached in 1996. If you vote against that, you are voting against the founders of this constitution who said to us, any president who behaves in a criminal manner must be subjected to impeachment process. They were not crazy when they said that. So let's not doubt the founders of this constitution. If Cyril has abandoned his conscience, let all members of parliament awaken his conscience that you are the one who inserted this section in the constitution and today that section demand of us to hold you accountable parliament must know that the constitutional court had very harsh weights against parliament for not holding the executive in particular the president accountable let's not repeat the same mistake tomorrow let's vote with our conscience not with the party mandate i thank you
Thank you very much, uh, President and Commander-in-Chief, members of the media, people of South Africa. That concludes the EFF press briefing. Thank you very much.